By the end of this tutorial, you are going to know how to make some of the highest quality shot traces on YouTube. And they look exactly like this. God, that's good. Sure. It's exciting doing something a little bit different on the channel. I have had a few comments about the shot traces that I put together. I thought it would be worth sharing. The really cool thing about these shot traces is they apply to moving backgrounds. So you can, you know, hold the camera, zoom in, and the shot tracer will stick to the background. It looks really professional, and I think you guys will like it. All right, so let's get into it. So here's what we're going to be making today. My cat is at the door. <laughs> right, this tutorial is going to be for Premiere Pro and After Effects. So make sure you're using uh, those programs to do this. So I like to find the point of contact. Uh, so just as he's hitting the ball, you can use your mouse scroller to, to find the right time. I go the frame before the person hits the ball. And what I do is I cut the video clip. So I'm gonna cut it here. Um, I might take off a tiny bit off the end and cut it there. Cool, so we've got our clip where we want the shot tracer to be. So I'm going to right click and I hit replace with After Effects Composition. That'll pull up After Effects. So I'm just going to uh, save it as Tracer 2. You can obviously call it what you want. So we're in After Effects. We are going to go over to the right to Tracker and I'm going to hit Track Camera. This should take a little bit of time. You'll see up the top left here, it says 30 out of 519 frames. Uh, and what this is doing is it's making sure that, I guess it's a 3D environment. Now that that's done, uh, what we see here is basically some selection points on the footage. And we want to just check where all these selection points are and what they're going to do when we zoom in on the footage. Because sometimes, as you'll see here, um, this pink one in the middle of the screen or on the left it disappeared. What we're going to do is select one of those points to use for our 3D mapping, but in this case that wouldn't be a good point to use because it disappears. I'm just going to find a point that I think looks good. You really want to pick a point that the ball is going towards. You wouldn't want to pick one of these points here. I'm going to try that. So it's this one here. It doesn't have to be exactly where the ball is going to go, just in the same proximity. You left click on that, right click, and you press create null and camera. Cool. Now that that's done, what you want to do is go up the top left here, Layer, New, and then Shape Layer. Sweet, so now we've got a shape that we're going to effectively draw onto the 3D world. But before we want to do that, we want to make sure that the shape is in the 3D world. We are going to link the shape to the track null one, and you're going to make sure the 3D icon is ticked. Now what we do is we zoom in to the footage and you're going to hit the pen tool or G. Page up and page down moves after effects frame by frame. But what we're going to do is zoom in and you're going to left click on the ball and then obviously the mouse scroll is zooming in and after effects and you're basically going to draw. I don't do it frame by frame. I, I kind of skip a few forward with this, uh, but you're going to draw the shape of the shot tracer. It's gone out of screen here, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to predict it goes to like, probably about there. Um, and then what I can do is zoom in, skip forward quite a lot, uh, I'll hit spacebar to play, and find out where the ball lands. It's landing there, so I'm going to left click there. And the shot tracer right now is a little bit curved to the left, I'm going to just zoom out and maybe bring this back a touch just to make sure it doesn't look like it's drawing on a wedge shot. Cool, so we've got a rough idea of our shot. The shape is filled in currently, which is not what we want. So I'm going to go into the shape, uh, hit this little drop down, contents, shape one, and then left click fill and press delete. So that gets rid of the fill. Now it looks more like a shot. Um, what we're going to do now is zoom in and this tracer is way too thin. You can't really see it properly. So we are going to zoom in and make it, this is all personal preference, but I like to make it nearish to the size of the ball. So you can go into stroke one and you can go into the width and drag it up or down depending on, um, on the shot. 
maybe a, tie, a touch less, maybe like 33. So now what we're going to do is turn the opacity down to about 75%. Again, personal preference, but I like it around this opacity. Instead of line cap and butt cap, I like to make it round. So now you can see this is rounded off and I think it just looks a bit smoother. So we are getting there with our shape. Um, you can see it sticks to the background and it looks really good, uh, but there are some things that we need to do. We need to animate the shape. What we're gonna do is go add trim paths and you can close the stroke for now, go into your trim paths and open it up. And then here we effectively are going to be animating the shot tracer. We're gonna drag the end point down to zero. We're gonna make a keyframe. If you left click here, that's created the first keyframe. Now I'm gonna zoom in. This is the fiddly part. Uh, I know some people like to use the graph editor uh, to make their shot traces quite fluid. I personally prefer doing it more frame by frame. It may take a bit longer, but yeah, that's, that's how I like to do it. Now what we're going to do is hit page down to move frame by frame and you want to drag this percentage up a tiny bit. I always like to make sure the percentage is just ahead of the ball, because I find when the ball is, is in frame, just, it kind of distracts your eye from the shot tracer. So now I'm gonna drag it up to here. Looks a little bit short, so maybe about 8%. The initial part of the shot is the most important to get right, because that's when the ball is traveling the quickest. You want to make sure the first few frames are done almost frame by frame, and then after that you can start skipping a few. Um, 28.5, cool. So you'll see there, um, I'll skip maybe four or five. Go up to here, 38. Okay, so now it's gone out of screen, so I'm just gonna move the shot out of screen. And you can see I might go up a bit, so I'm gonna make sure that that is covered. Cool, so let's just watch that back. Lovely. Alright, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out when the ball starts falling and it hits the ground around there. I'm going to move the percentage to 100% when I know the ball hits the ground and then I can adjust the speed of how it falls um, after that. So let, if we watch that back, oh, the speed's actually quite good. I think that's a good shot tracer. All right, so I've slept on it and I've thought some of you might be filming on phones so you won't be able to zoom in where the ball goes and you may not know where the ball lands or you can't see it on the screen. It's going to involve the same kind of setup process. I'll do that quite quickly, what we've learned already, but then when it comes to actually tracing the shot, I'll slow down. This is good. Layer, new shape layer. Drag it on to match with the track null. Hit the shape layer 3D icon and I'm going to be drawing my shape. This is me hitting a driver. I'm going to track the ball until I can't see it anymore. So it's about here where I can't really see it. And what I do is I either will remember where the ball landed or I will go into the footage and find where I hit the next shot. And then I put the shot tracer to land around that spot. Obviously with this situation I'm hitting a I'm going to say power fade, <laughs> not a slice, it's definitely a slice. And I'm going to draw that into the shot shape here. And I can adjust this. I know I ended up going around these trees, so I'm going to go there. So let's see, there, it looks a little bit lumpy, so I'm just going to drag this down to here. Just make some little changes to make it look a bit smoother. Again, get rid of the fill. There we go, so that's a pretty good shot shape, well it's not a good shot shape, but it's correct. I'm going to now animate, add trim paths, drag it back to zero again, and here we go. So I've dragged the footage back to the start. I'm going to create my keyframe and skip forward and animate this. Here we want to create a realistic looking shot. Often when it gets past the point where you can see the ball is when the ball starts slowing down a fair amount. So I kind of just guess how far to put the keyframes away from each other. Um, and in this situation, we're going to drag it out to about there. Maybe put it about here. And kind of have a few guesses at it. And 
we will watch it back and see if it looks good. So that actually looks really good. I don't think I've ever been able to do it that well from the first try. I'm pretty stoked with that. However, if you do want to change up the speed of the shot tracer, what you can do is you can just play around with these keyframes. Either add new keyframes or make them quicker or slower. If I want it to land quicker, for example, from this point onwards, let's make it go very quick. So that's just saying the end point is a lot sooner than it was, for example. Then it ends quite quickly. If I do it there, it'll be really quick. Yeah, so it doesn't look good, but that's how you can adjust that. If I wanted to adjust the top and make it curve slower up the top, then I can drag this part a bit further out. So let's watch it now. Yeah. So if you can see that the shot goes from going really fast and then there's a visible change in speed, uh, what you can do is you can go in between those two keyframes here. Um, it goes from going quite fast and then it slows down. Not that noticeable, but if it did annoy you, you can go into here and you can effectively make a keyframe in the middle that's a little bit past where it currently is. If I put this to 67, now it'll be slightly further at this point and it won't look as jarring. Cool. So if this tutorial is helping you out in any way, please make sure you leave a like so we can get it out to more people and we can see some awesome shot traces on some more content. Anyway, let's get back to it. There are still a few extra things that I like to do to mine. Again, personal preference. We go into stroke. I like to make the width of the shot tracer get thinner as it gets further away. It just gives it a little bit of extra 3D look. What I do is I open up stroke. I go stroke width here and I create a keyframe at the start. And then I go to where the ball lands and then I make it generally just under half of the initial one. So I'll make it 15. And there we go. So you can see it gets thinner over time and it looks a little bit better at the landing point. It's nowhere near as wide. So I then skip forward a few frames and then make the, I click opacity to create a keyframe for that. And then I drag it a bit out and I turn that back down to 0%. So that'll create a fade out effect for the opacity and the shot tracer. Just about done. The one extra little thing I do is I go into effects and presets and then I type in glow and I drag it onto the shape layer. So that makes a nice little glow onto the shot tracer and there we are. It's playing in slow motion, which sometimes happens if your computer's trying hard. So this is the end result of the shot tracer. I think it looks pretty good. Now that we're done, we want to save. So you want to save your clip and then you go back over to Premiere Pro. And here we have the shot tracer. One thing I like to do when I'm editing is I like to render each After Effects composition in the actual clip itself just so my computer operates smoothly. Uh, so what I do is I right click and I press render and replace and normally just go with the settings it gives me. And so that might take a few seconds. That's all rendered. Uh, and if you do need to go back and edit one of these, then you can right click and you just press restore unrendered. And if you want to edit it in your After Effects, you just right click and press edit original. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful. I put these shot traces for almost every shot in my videos. I just think it looks really cool. Uh, it takes a lot of time, but I think the effort's worth it. I appreciate each and every one of you still watching this video. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys next time.